As we progress through this program, you need to keep in mind that the procedures we'll demonstrate are typical of how many plants handle abnormal and emergency conditions. Your plant's procedures will give you specific information on how you should respond. Now the chances are extremely good that if you follow your plant's operating procedures and monitor your equipment properly, your boiler is not going to explode. However, by understanding why boilers explode and the situations that have the potential for causing explosions, you're better prepared to anticipate the possibility of an explosion and act to keep that explosion from occurring. In general, boiler explosions occur when an abnormally high concentration of combustibles is suddenly and uncontrollably ignited inside the boiler. Now, there are a number of situations that can lead to a high concentration of combustibles in the boiler furnace. Startup is one example. As you know from earlier training, fuel, air, heat, and a chemical reaction are the four basic requirements for combustion. As this simplified diagram of a burner port illustrates, in preparation for startup, an operator first sparks igniters to provide the heat source to start the combustion process. The operator next establishes secondary airflow to the burner to provide the air requirement. With the igniter sparking and air supplied for combustion, the final step is the introduction of fuel to the burner. The fuel and air combine to form a combustible mixture. The heat from the igniter starts the combustion process. Now, that's the way it's supposed to work. However, boiler explosions occur during unusual conditions. Let's suppose that the igniter malfunctions and does not spark as it is supposed to. We'll use the same illustration to see how an explosion might occur. The operator turns the controller to start the igniter sparking. However, in this case, the igniter is slow to respond and doesn't spark right away. The operator next establishes airflow to the burner port and then starts fuel flow. The igniter still doesn't spark. The air and fuel form a combustible mixture. The mixture accumulates in the boiler as more fuel and air are supplied. If the igniter suddenly begins sparking, it will ignite this abnormally large mixture. The result is an explosion. The same thing can happen if a combustible mixture is present in the boiler prior to startup and an operator sparks igniters without first purging the boiler. An operator can easily avoid these situations by carefully following plant procedures and purging the boiler before sparking igniters. Then verifying that the igniters are operating properly before introducing air and fuel to the boiler. Explosive fuel mixtures can also occur during normal operation. If either the flow of air or the flow of fuel to the burner port is temporarily interrupted and then re-established, an explosion may occur. Again, from earlier training, you know that if one of the four basic requirements for combustion is eliminated, combustion will cease. If you have established a proper boiler flame and air flow and fuel flow are properly matched, your burners will operate the way they're supposed to. However, if air flow, for example, is interrupted, one of the basic requirements for combustion is eliminated. This will cause the boiler flame to go out. Unless the fuel flow is immediately stopped and the boiler is purged, an abnormally high concentration of fuel may accumulate near the burner port. If airflow is subsequently re-established, this large concentration of fuel can ignite suddenly and cause an explosion. Interrupting fuel flow will also extinguish the boiler flame. And unless steps are taken to correct the problem according to procedures, an explosion may result when fuel flow is restored. Generally, an operator has several indications that make it possible to verify that a flame is present in the boiler. Viewing ports, mirrors, and television monitors allow visual indication that combustion is taking place. Typically, if an operator discovers that the boiler flame has gone out, procedures indicate to immediately shut off the fuel supply and to purge the boiler for a designated amount of time before restarting the flame. Another situation that can lead to a boiler explosion is difficult to detect and may cause an explosion with no warning whatsoever. To give you one example of how this unusual situation might occur, we'll use a boiler that has a gas bypass system for steam temperature control. As you learned earlier, under normal conditions, flue gas flows from the furnace area over the superheaters and reheater in this section of the boiler, over the economizer, and then through the air preheaters. In a boiler with a flue gas bypass, if the outlet temperature of the superheated steam gets too high, 
this damper is opened, which redirects a portion of the flue gas away from the superheaters. When superheated temperature returns to normal, the damper is closed and flue gas flow proceeds normally. Gas bypass systems usually do not require the use of fans. Flue gas can be redirected simply by opening a damper. The reason is simple. The pressure in this part of the boiler is higher than the pressure in this part. And fluids naturally flow from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. When the damper is closed, a dead spot may occur in the ductwork at the entrance to the gas bypass system. A dead spot is an area where little or no flow takes place. Now, let us suppose that, for whatever reason, the boiler flame was momentarily lost and an abnormally large quantity of fuel entered the boiler. The operator responded properly by cutting fuel flow to the burners and increasing airflow to purge the boiler of all combustibles. But let us also suppose that a portion of the combustibles accumulated in this dead spot around the gas bypass damper and were not purged from the boiler. When purging was complete, the operator followed the proper procedures for reestablishing the boiler flame. But remember, combustibles remained in this dead spot in the ductwork. The boiler continues operating for some time with nothing unusual happening. However, let's suppose further that the operator needs to adjust superheater outlet temperature and opens the bypass damper. The combustibles that have accumulated in the ductwork are no longer in a dead spot. They are immediately reintroduced into the flow path of flue gas going to the economizer, or, due to some back pressure around the damper, are forced back into the furnace area of the boiler. The result could be sudden and uncontrolled combustion. In other words, an explosion in either the furnace area, the ductwork, or near the economizer. Now, what we've just done is a lot of supposing, but let me stress that boiler explosions occur under uncommon conditions. If it is possible to make up a situation where an explosion could possibly happen, it is also possible that under rare and unusual circumstances, those conditions can exist and cause an explosion. Let me again stress that boiler explosions are uncommon occurrences. By following your plant's operating procedures, the chances of them happening to you are extremely slim. What you can do to keep explosive situations from developing is to carefully monitor your boiler flame and to make sure that combustion is taking place properly. You should also keep a careful watch on the fuel flow and air flow to the burners to make certain that both are being supplied in proper proportions. Finally, since the boiler explosions, which have occurred in the past, have often been fostered by a loss of boiler flame, knowing the procedures for dealing with this situation and the proper procedures for purging your boiler will prevent boiler explosions. In the next part of this program, we'll look at some situations that can lead to the loss of a boiler flame and the typical procedures for returning the boiler to normal operation. For now, read over the material in your text on the cause of boiler explosions and answer the questions. If you need any help with this material, ask your instructor before going on.